In January of 1936, this guy here, George V, died. His son, Edward VIII here, then picked up the royal baton and became king for about 10 months until December 1936. But then he abdicated the throne and his younger brother, George VI here, that's when he stepped in and he became king. So what the heck went on in 1936? Why was it a mentally special year for stamp collectors? Why did we have three kings on the throne instead of one? Well, let me explain what happened. As previously mentioned, 1936 began with the final illness of King George V here on the left. It was said that as he lay on his deathbed, Queen Mary tried to cheer him up by saying that when he was able, she'd take him to the seaside resort of Bognor Regis. The king apparently muttered, bugger Bognor, turned his face to the war and died. And so, on the 20th of January, the Prince of Wales succeeded to the throne. This dude here in the center. Birth name David, he decided instead to take for his title the name of his grandfather and was then known as King Edward VIII. Now, Edward and his father here were said to have had a strained relationship at best. His first act on hearing his father's death was to have all the clocks in the royal residences put to the correct time as apparently King George V liked to have them 20 minutes fast. Edward VIII was almost 42 and still a bachelor when he became king but had embarked on an affair with Mrs. Wallace Simpson, a Baltimore socialite. And so a constitutional crisis unfolded in full view of the British public and was only resolved on the 11th of December when King Edward was compelled to give up the throne for the woman he loved, Mrs. Simpson. So that takes him out the picture. Edward and Wallace Simpson left the country and moved to France, where they laid to married. So this is where his younger brother, Albert, otherwise known as George VI, steps up to the plate and assumes responsibility of being the third monarch that year to sit on the throne. Okay, due to Edward VIII's short reign, 10 months only, only four definitive stamps were printed. And here they are. As you can see, the half penny stamp, top left in green, the red one penny stamp, the brown one and a half penny stamp, and the blue two and a half penny stamp, bottom right there. My personal favorite from this set of four, the half penny stamp, the one in green top left. As you can see, it's a real simple design. The king is facing left, and it's the same picture for all four, just different colors. So where does 1936 leave us? Well, philatically speaking, it's a unique period in time. Three different portraits of three different monarchs in one year. And thanks to his short reign, completing this mini collection of Edward VIII British stamps can be done fairly easily with a few modest purchases. This lot only cost me a couple of pounds. Those three were the easiest to get the blue two and a half penny. Um, struggled with that one a little bit, but yeah, like I said, just a couple of pounds for the lot here. So no real value to them, but nice just to complete your collection. Forever seen as the black sheep of the royal family, Edward's only crime was to fall in love, but with the wrong woman, according to half of the British population and the royal family. But ultimately, love won out, and surely that's not a bad thing, hey? Let me know what you think about Edward VIII's decision to follow his heart 
in the comment section below. Also, let me know if you have any of these four stamps in your collection and which is your favourite. Right, that's it for another stamp video. Please like, share, comment and subscribe for more content. It's always a huge incentive for me to keep going uh, with the channel if I think you're finding the videos interesting. Anyways, thanks for subscribing, thanks for watching, and until the next video, bye for now.